Well, good morning, everyone. I'm uh, pleased this morning to have an opportunity to uh, talk to this audience about uh, desktop aeronautics and post-processing CART 3D CFD data using TechBlock Chorus. And I'm joined this morning by Janet Zen. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. And uh, today we're going to go through a couple of use cases. Uh, I know some people are still uh, getting on, so as you do, uh, if you have any questions, again, use the questions tab. Just a quick overview of the agenda. Uh, we'll go through some quick introductions of both our companies and uh, the problems. And then we'll really focus on two specific use cases. The first will be around uh, an A320 sweep looking for more or less aero database development. And uh, the second problem we'll go into more detail will be uh, surface deflections. And again, we'll be using go-kart and a combination of TechBlot Chorus to analyze the results. As a quick introduction about uh, TechBlot, for those of you who are new to our company, uh, TechBlot was founded in 1981 by Don Roberts and Mike Peary. And uh, they actually have been friends since uh, elementary school grew up together, went to grad school together, and uh, started the company in 81 after working at Boeing uh, for several years. That was back uh, when we did primarily CFD code development. In about 1987, we also started developing visualization and analysis tools for CFD. We now have over 50,000 users of TechBlot around the world. And as of this morning, we have 104. Uh, academic site license is not 100. And these are at, primarily at uh, research institutions, uh, and this, these include schools like Caltech, Stanford, MIT, uh, at least domestically, and several um, institutes around the world, including IITs in India, uh, some the universities in Japan, like um, the Tokyo Technical Institute, etc. About me, um, my background's chemical physics. I did my undergraduate and part of my graduate work at UCLA, and then um, most of my graduate work at the University of Utah. Uh, I did a stint in Osaka as part of a Mambusho follow a fellowship where I did uh, work with a group on advanced materials uh, preparation. And uh, then I was a postdoc at the University of Washington. I've uh, published several papers uh, in, in several different disciplines and given several talks, uh, hundreds of talks, in fact, on TechBlot 360. I'd also uh, like to introduce Janet Zen. Uh, Janet is also a UCLA grad, go Bruins. Uh, yeah. probably. <laughs> uh, did her work primarily in fluid dynamics and biofluidics. Um, also did deformation of elastic channels and has been working at Desktop Aeronautics as a product manager for the GoCAD software and an application engineer for support. Prior to that, she also worked at NASA Ames, as well as Northrop Grumman, both uh, in Silicon Valley or in uh, Northern California. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Darrell. Janet, at this point, um, I'm going to probably turn over the presentation to you, and you're going to introduce us to the two use cases that we're going to talk about this morning. Sure. Thank and you. Double check to make sure the mouse is working for you as well. Um, there we go. I think I'm clicking, or was that you? No, that was you. You're good. Okay, great. <laughs> well, uh, thank you again for having us today. Uh, my name is Janet Zen. I work at Desktop Aeronautics, and we're a company located in Palo Alto, California, right down the street from Stanford. Um, we were founded in 1994 by Professor Lon Crow of Stanford, and we've been around for a little while. And in 2012, we were purchased by Arion Corporation. So now we're a wholly owned subsidiary of Arion. We're a pretty small company, so as Darrell mentioned, I'm the product manager, but I also moonlight as an applications engineer, because um, we're a small, small person company. And Desktop Aeronautics is the licensed distributor of NASA Part 3D, which is what we'll be talking about today. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of a background on our analysis tool. Um, CAR3D is a CFD tool that was developed by some individuals at NASA Ames and NYU. It's a Cartesian Euler code uh, that, uh, that can generate uh, Cartesian mesh for arbitrarily complex geometry. It's currently available commercially and academically 
um, as well as for government contractors. So the cool thing about CAR 3D is that um, because it's an Euler code, you can uh, run a lot of different cases and analyses fairly quickly. Uh, it's a very scalable code and can be run in batch mode. So uh, CAR 3D really fills that niche in the conceptual design phase where you don't really have the computational time to run lots and lots of Navier Stokes uh, solvers. Rather, um, using CAR 3D, you can get sort of a really good answer, um, sort of the 80% answer in about 20% of the time. And that really opens up the design and analysis space for folks um, who are doing conceptual design. So on top of CAR 3D, which is traditionally a command line code, uh, Desktop Aeronautics has developed GoCart, which is a very user-friendly GUI that wraps around the executable. Uh, within this GUI, there's an end-to-end -end workflow, and I'll walk through it during this webinar. So within the workflow, you can import your CAD geometry, uh, do the automatic Cartesian meshing, run the flow solver, and view the results all within minutes, basically. So it really uh, opens up access to uh, users who aren't very familiar with CFD um, and can also just streamline the process and make things a little bit uh, easier. Especially, uh, it can help lower that learning curve into uh, kind of setting up an analysis um, and running through the results fairly quickly. And Janet, a, a quick question uh, for those people sure. who maybe aren't uh, familiar with CAR3D. Um, what kind of computational resources do you typically need to have at your disposal to do these type of analyses? Um, it depends on what types of problems you're running, but if you're doing, uh, say for example, the sleep problem that I'm going through, you can easily run cases on a laptop or a desktop, and um, certainly that you can do problems with pretty quick turnaround with that sort of computational power. Um, you can also scale this and run it on a kind of a, a cluster um, and run things in batch mode on a supercomputer. So it's very flexible in that sense. So it really depends on what type of problems you're looking for. Okay. To solve. Yeah. Thanks for that question. Um, so as you can see, um, CAR 3D kind of is really great for um, high, sort of the high speed flow regime because it's an Euler code. And there are lots of problems that have been used, uh, that have that have been used, solved with CART 3D. Um, so some very typical applications that we've seen with our customers um, and with other, other entities, government entities, are um, propulsion and airframe integration, um, as well as optimization. And I want to mention that our parent company, Arion, is actually using CART 3D to do uh, design optimization of an inlet for their supersonic business jet. So they use CART 3D um, and do the analysis and then hook it up to an optimizer, and they've been able to run uh, hundreds, several hundreds of cases um, pretty fast um, on a cluster overnight. Um, a lot of folks use CART 3D for aircraft conceptual design, um, launch vehicle analysis, as well as sonic boom prediction. Sonic boom prediction. So the takeaway here is really that CART 3D can be used to rapidly generate thousands of analysis pieces. But once again, um, when you run into a lot of data, there comes the question of how do you manage that? Um, how are you able to intelligently extract engineering insight from all that? And that's really where the power of Tech Black Chorus comes in. Um, Chorus is kind of built around the capability of reading in um, lots and lots of data and being able to allow the user and the engineer to really look at things in one snapshot. So I'm going to go over our first example problem. Uh, it's doing sweeps analysis of an Airbus A320. And this is sort of a pretty uh, textbook example of how you might do or uh, determine drag polars um, of an aircraft. And it's really meant to kind of give a flavor of what go-kart is capable of and how that plays really nicely with chorus and how chorus can sort of very uh, quickly read in all the data from the analysis results. So we were asked to do um, an analysis of Mach and Alpha Sleep for an Airbus A320 for a range of Mach numbers um, and angles of attack. So with the analysis setup, we were able to import uh, a step file geometry 
into go-kart and create the triangulation of it. Um, and I'll go into this in more detail. I have a 10-minute video that sets through this entire workflow, but I wanted to give the audience an idea of what the end-to-end -end process is. Um, within go-kart, once we bring in the geometry, we built the computational mesh, uh, kind of do an initial analysis to check out the grid and make sure the floor solver settings make sense to us. And then after that, we set up sweeps for varying mock numbers and angles of attack. So it came out to be about a total of 80 analyses. Okay. Um, after we ran those pieces, we had a database of results. Um, GoCart automatically calculates the lift and drag coefficients for each case, and it generates TechPot solution files. In this case, they're called cutplanes.dat and components.i.dat. And these files uh, are automatically uh, generated and can be read into TechPot 360 as well as Chorus directly. So um, GoCart is able to plot the contours from a single run, but and that helps you do a gut check. But really, um, the, the meat of the post-processing um, tech plot has that capability to do a lot of it to generate your uh, variables, to do calculations, and come up with just very nice graphics for um, post-processing results. So here, um, we, after doing the analysis, we drop the, the uh, result into Chorus. And what you see here is that you get a one-shot one view of all your results. And that's really kind of powerful here because um, if one of your runs didn't converge, if there was something that happened in the solution or the flow field that you didn't expect, it would be really difficult or at least not quite as intuitive to pull that information from, say, the Excel spreadsheet that was on the previous slide. But when you have it in an environment like TechBot um, and in Chorus, you sort of just you, you're able to visualize the data in a much more concise way and be able to pull information from it that you wouldn't otherwise so it wouldn't be otherwise otherwise be so readily available. So now I'm going to step through sort of the end-to-end -end workflow of an eight, of a, of the demo that we just talked about, and hopefully the video. There we go. So before we get started on the video, um, let me go ahead and hit pause here. What we're looking at, um, I just want to explain a little bit to the audience. We're looking at the um, go-kart GUI, and I'm going to walk through just describe what it looks like um, really quickly before we go ahead and start the video. So as I mentioned before, we have an end-to-end -end workflow from preprocessor to volume meshing to flow solver um, and the post-processor. And what you're looking at now is the A320 geometry, and all the components are listed on the left. And you can bring in components individually or as one assembly into the GUI directly, and you can also do manipulations and transformations um, right within the GUI. So it's, it's pretty powerful in the sense that you don't have to, um, if you want to rotate one component, for example, you don't have to bring it out of um, the, the solver and do it in your CAD program. You can just do it straight in the GUI. So what's going to happen here is we have the A320 geometry. We're going to intersect these components. And what that means is it creates a single watertight geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So we've intersected our geometry. And once that is done, we'll move into the next panel, which is the volume mesh. And what's happening here is we're creating uh, cut planes. And these are slice views through the flow field uh, where the mesh is being created. And what the user can do here is be able to visualize the mesh and see, um, is the, was the automatic mesh generation to my satisfaction? Um, are the regions that I'm interested in, do they have enough refinement? And within this panel, you can refine uh, the mesh cells. Say, if you're interested in the leading edge of the wing, you can do that very easily. Um, and the cut planes help you visual visualize that. What's great here is that the cut planes are automatically exported as files that can be read into TechPod as well. So once we're satisfied with the volume mesh, we move ahead to the flow solver. We can set our flight conditions and also our reference areas here. And then once we are happy with those, we go ahead and simulate the flow solution. 
And this is a little bit fast forwarded. Um, this simulation took about 10 minutes to run, so I didn't want to make folks fix it. But it's still pretty quick. Um, here you're looking at the residuals history, and you're checking the forces and moments to make sure that they've also converged. Now we move into the post-processor, and here's where you're able to look at uh, sort of the data within the GUI, sort of for a quick gut check to make sure that your simulation makes sense, um, your flow field isn't totally wonky, and this is where you can load the cut planes. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do a very good job of it when I was making this video, so you can sort of imagine the contours of the cut planes. But um, once you are satisfied with that initial gut check, you can easily set up your sweep uh, analyses using the sweep feature. And then GoCart will run all those cases and create the file structure um, within the directory that will spit out all the data automatically for each of the sweeps. So here now we move into TechPot Chorus. And I've already preloaded some of the data. You can see there's uh, different mock and alpha sweeps as well as CLs and CMs. What I'm doing now is appending the plotting data, the cut planes and components data, uh, the solution file, straight into core. So some of you may be familiar with setting up this directory structure or identifying the sources and the names of the files. So scrolling down into the table view, I have all the data that, I'm, that I just loaded. What I wanted to demonstrate here was um, how to create a matrix view of all the plotting data and the solution using the solution file. So I do create images. And what this does is within Chorus, you can launch TechPlot 360 directly, and it'll automatically load uh, your solution file. So in, case this, in this case, it's the um, components.i.dat file. So I'm manipulating the view and plotting a contour of CT in this case. I select the view that I'm interested in, and I want to say, OK, I want to create a matrix view with all this, uh, with images of this type. And what I'm demonstrating here now is creating a macro to record uh, kind of all the clicks that I went through in 360 to generate that image. I go to Tools, and I open up the Chorus panel. And I go ahead and hit macro, uh, record the macro. I'm recording over a macro that I've already made in this case. And what I want to uh, let the audience know is that you don't necessarily have to create a macro in order to be able to generate that matrix view. But if you were to do a calculation um, of an analysis variable you're interested in, say you wanted to calculate the Mach number, um, you could go to Tools and Analyze and then go through that calculation and record that within your macro. And as you're generating the plot um, that you want to plot Mach number, you can go ahead and have Chorus use that, that macro in generating the images. So this is just looking at uh, 360, sort of recording that macro and recreating that image that I showed earlier. And, and Janet, it's worth pointing out that in general, if you're just looking at style information, you can just use a style template. Uh, but you can also use a macro, again, to calculate additional variables. So it's really, it depends on kind of what your end goal is in the analysis. So kind of both methods work uh, fine, honestly. Yeah, that's right. So it's, it's very flexible. Um, again, yeah, doing a style template works um, if you're looking to create just a view. It's a good point. Now I've created both a macro and a style template. Um, you can do both or one or the other, just depending on the type of analysis. And I go back to Chorus, and I want to create the image with those two uh, programs that I just loaded. So on the, in the corner, you have your job manager. And once it's finished running the job you just asked it to, you can deposit your image into the matrix. And voila. So now say I want to create, fill the matrix with that same view um, of the flow solution. Very easily click View Data, 
and then or generate create images, and TechPlot Chorus will automatically generate those images. So really straightforward, um, easy to use to be able to have a snapshot of all your data kind of in one view. The other thing I wanted to show in Chorus for this example was to be able to use the scatter plot. Um, if you wanted to sort of look at all your data in a 3D uh, view, you can plot it fairly easily. So in this case, if you're interested in drag polars and comparing all your results uh, against each other, you can also do that within Chorus. That was the first demo. Um, I'm going to stop here. Does anybody have any questions at the moment? Um, if not, I'll go ahead and move forward. How, do, how am I doing on time, Joel? I think you're doing okay. And actually, maybe uh, just for clarity, I actually have that example here. Um, and I, I would just point out that yeah, in addition to looking at some of the more qualitative plots, it's also kind of nice to be able to look at things like residuals. Uh, those same cut planes can also be viewed in, in more of a matrix view. And what Chorus really provides then, or in this example, is a, the ability to kind of bring in this collection and evaluate the overall designs, well in this case, performance space, uh, to kind of understand how things are, are changing, including, for example, looking at CP cuts. So if you were more interested in uh, CP on the wing, well then you could actually do that as well. So there's in addition to doing some of the qualitative analysis, being able to look at the more quantitative analysis gives you an opportunity to evaluate that system of results uh, more easily. And I, I actually brought in a few more results, Janet, than, than you had brought in, not that it makes too much difference, but uh, so including the CP on the wing, because oftentimes you are looking for things like stall, and you can see where you have some areas of low pressure at the higher uh, MOX and higher alpha uh, results. Okay. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll bring it back over, and um, we can go on to the next uh, example. And I'll turn it back over to you, Janet. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, let's. We'll just go to the next slide, and it should go. No problem. Okay. Here we go. There you go. I think you're set. Great. Thanks. <laughs> um, so the second example problem that I wanted to uh, show the audience is a surface deflection study. So um, here we're looking at um, an example where uh, we want to analyze the scenario during takeoff and landing where uh, we're doing deflection of surfaces. And in this case, we're going to be looking at uh, the outer ailerons of this uh, wing, wing body. And what I want to, the goal of this is to be able to characterize the rolling moment as where um, looking at this body going through um, the flow field at different angles of attack, as well as different uh, aileron deflections. So it's a little bit less intuitive to try to think of what the rolling moment might look like versus in the previous example, which is a little bit more textbook. So here's where you can really um, use GoCart and Chorus to be able to visualize the data um, and be able to get more insight from there. So the problem setup is pretty similar. Um, we bring in the geometry to go-kart and do uh, in rotation of the actual geometry itself right within the GUI. Um, and that's what I wanted to show off um, in this particular example. And then very similarly, we're going to run through an alpha sweep of the different aileron angles. So we're back in our GUI, and we're importing our geometry. And I apologize for the screen being a little bit cut off. Um, but we're bringing in the wing body here. And what's really cool about GoCart is that you can select the components and do um, a individual manipulation of that component. So here I've selected one of the ailerons. What I'm going to do is rotate it using an axis that I create right within the GUI. So I'm selecting my endpoint to create the axis. And 
From here, you can view right within the GUI at the axes that you've created and hit Apply Transformation. And this is really cool because, again, you don't have to exit uh, your solver to be able to do this geometry manipulation, whereas in a lot of other solvers, you would have to go back to your CAD program and do the rotation and then bring back the geometry and then kind of rebuild your mesh. And GoCard is really powerful in this sense because it saves you a lot of time in doing that. And with the automated uh, mesh generation capability, you can use pretty much the same uh, mesh settings for a lot of different geometry. So that really cuts down, if you're a CFP person, um, because this is a viscous code, that really helps you save a whole lot of time and you can do a lot more in the early phases of conceptual design. So once more, I'm creating cut planes to view the mesh to see if I'm happy with it. And I'm zooming in. And you can see the refinement that's closer to the body and uh, a little bit coarser as it's out in the flow field. So once I'm happy with that, I create my volume mesh and I run my flow solver. I can set my reference areas as well as my flight conditions in this case. And I believe this particular example is the a neutral zero degree uh, aileron deflection. I set my Mach number and my angle of attack. And I also determine the number of iterations I want to run and the multi-grid level. And I'm going to oops, <laughs> get the head there. Sorry about that. Let's see here. And could you jump to about 3 minutes and 51 seconds in the oh, video? Can do. How's that? <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. So we just ran through the flow solution, and now we're back in the post-processor. Uh, again, checking to make sure our forces and moments have converged. And doing a quick gut check within the post-processor. So you can do some basic visualizations um, at the post-processor, but really you want to do the heavy-duty lifting um, within tech projects because there's so much more flexibility there. And there's a launch TechPlot 360 button that will, um, if you have 360 installed on your computer, you can launch it straight from the GUI. So it's fairly convenient. And again, setting up our sleep cases. And Jana, it's probably worth pointing out that in addition to launching 360, it also sets up the directory structure uh, for Chorus as well. That's right. So we're back in Chorus. Um, as you can see, we have three different flap angles, minus 15, 15, and 0 degrees. And I already preloaded some of the uh, data into here. But what, uh, this case actually shows another interesting uh, tool that can be used within Chorus, which is the um, surrogate model. So for example, if you wanted to know um, what the rolling moment was at angle 13, uh, flap angle 13 with angle of attack uh, 3.8. You can interpolate um, from that surrogate model, and Chorus, I believe, will actually export all that data into a CSV file, file that you can look at. Does that sound true, Jura? That is true. Uh, you can also export if you're, uh, for example, um, it just went through, but if you did want to actually uh, take that data out. You can also take it out as the equation. So if you're using a simple response surface, you can export mm -hmm. the equation details and then use those for interpolative values. Um, which, you know, depending on the type of work you're doing, interpolation can get you in trouble. But for uh, a relatively well-refined set of data, um, you can certainly use the SERGA model for that type of analysis. Uh, we also see people who use uh, SERGA models as, as a way to kind of look for additional points that may need to be run. Um, so there's there's a lot of utility in the surrogate model. Uh, it is pretty simple to start with, but we are adding additional capabilities into that aspect of the product as we go along. So, um, But I'll turn it back over to you. I think you have a couple more slides. Okay. Yeah. I think I have one more slide. Oh, 
I apologize to the audience. This is two of the same plots, so your eyes are not deceiving you. <laughs> Forgot to take <laughs> one out. <laughs> but um, what I wanted to show here was um, sort of the surrogate model that we applied to the rolling moment. Um, so the goal of the study was to kind of be able to characterize the design space um, using this geometry. And it's not very intuitive, but you can very quickly and easily do it in GoCart and be able to visualize it in course. So here we use the Kriging model um, and applied it to our uh, kind of our results here for different angles of attack as well as the uh, deflections of the aileron. So I think that's my last slide. Um, I just wanted to say again, um, you can see just how quickly and easily you can do analysis in go-kart and just uh, with the amount of data that you have, the, um, the flexibility and the power of course to really be able to give you um, a way to look at all that data and be able to gather insight from it. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think I should go to the last slide. There we go. So yeah, um, I'm going to turn it back to Jarrell and just thank the audience for coming and listening. Um, and thanks, Darrell, for this opportunity to be able to work with you on this joint webinar. Thank you. And um, what I was actually going to do, Jenna, was just maybe give a little more detail as to uh, how Chorus fits into this workflow. So sure. I was, yeah. um, let's just quickly go to the desktop. Oh, whoops, well, that's good enough, actually. Um, and I wanted to show you kind of what that data looks like, and that can give you an idea of, of how you can process large sets or collections of data. So this particular example, uh, we'll start with the A320 mock and alpha suite. So the data uh, you can see is in a series of directories where each directory is named based on the initial conditions. Um, now, within each directory, we actually have more than just the tech plot data, Janet. We also have some of the That's forces right. data, the uh, moment data, as well as the history. Uh, and if we, right. if we look at any one of these, uh, you can see, I don't know how many people here use uh, Notepad++, but I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, anyway, you can kind of see what uh, that format looks like. So it is relatively simple, but the information that's contained in this file is actually important to the analysis. So when we think about building a project, and we'll go back into uh, Chorus here for a moment, this, this project has a lot of assets that come along with it. It has the uh, component data, which is truly just the surface, and so that gives you the surface CP, et cetera. It also includes the cut planes, uh, which I showed you a moment ago, the forces, the history, and the moment. And when we're building a project, we want to leverage all of this, this data uh, to create uh, a project and to move forward. So I'm going to show you quickly how one can actually utilize that data in Chorus. So let me quickly show you what we have. So there's, there's a couple of things that you saw before, which were around uh, looking at each individual solution and looking at a matrix of those solutions based on in initial conditions, which is certainly something that Chorus does a very good job with helping you kind of analyze those results. Uh, but in addition to looking at uh, just the initial conditions, one can actually look at specific cases and evaluate, for example, sets of images, especially if you're looking for bad actors. So uh, if we look at an example, say, at, uh, again, high mock, high angle of attack, and uh, perhaps uh, look at it versus the more nominal case, which is at uh, more of a cruise mock and uh, low angle of attack, we can kind of select those two images, and now we can view them simultaneously. And we want to do that because we want to evaluate uh, those images as a function of uh, different views of the data. So we're looking at the individual CP curves, uh, but we could also look at, for example, all the cut planes. So now we're, we're looking at two cases here where we're looking at just the cut planes that we brought over from GoCart. And the idea is that you can very quickly see what the qualitative differences are between, again, the high angle of attack and the low angle of attack and low mock and high mock. And you're looking for, in this case, whether or not you're seeing any uh, anomalous behavior, behavior that doesn't make sense in the context of the, the simulations. And these data basically should be pretty well behaved. As Janet, you pointed out, this is kind of a textbook case. Uh, but being able to, say, select an image and say, OK, well, this image is the nominal case, and I want to do a difference from this image to the 
a high mock number and you can see very quickly that it's going to show me a qualitative pixel difference between the two cases which is a good place to start again if you're looking for anomalous behavior you may however want to look at it a little more quantitatively so in that context we may actually want to view the the solutions side by side so we selected two and we're going to bring over just the plane surface and perhaps look at the CP on the wing for that surface and in this case it's going to fire up 360 but we're not looking at a solution now we're looking at multiple solutions now TechBot 360EX uh, we have done some improvements around usability that will be uh, coming over into TechBot course in the next month or so um, one of the key things here is that the data is actually in ASCII format and uh, TechPlot converts ASCII files to uh, automatically is going to convert them to a binary file, but we don't save that file out. So you kind of pay a little bit of a penalty if you have large data, if the data is in ASCII. Uh, just something to be aware of. So we're now looking at a side-by-side -side representation of the, the two cases. We can put in the initial conditions uh, if we want to know what those are. We can also put in some of the condition or the output variables. Uh, which didn't look like uh, for these two cases, perhaps they're not available, but that's that's not critical. Um, so we can start to look at a more quantitative difference between the two solutions purely by uh, doing uh, setting one as a master as the nominal case and showing the difference. So in this case, we're actually going to do a point by point grid subtraction of the two cases. And now what we're looking at down here in the bottom is a quantitative difference uh, between the two solutions which is a good way to look for those differences, especially if they're more subtle. When you're doing uh, kind of that initial design, you may be having to make decisions about areas of feasibility where the differences are, are maybe not apparent by looking purely at the qualitative uh, plot. So by evaluating the quantitative data, you can often get insight into uh, which design may actually be behaving better. So this, this type of analysis from a collection of results uh, gives you kind of a new way to interrogate sets of solutions and, and using go-kart it's amazing how quickly you can actually generate a reasonably dense set of data that you can uh, go through and analyze. Uh, Mike Aftimus I think at one point told me that he's been using uh, CART 3D and a couple of the aero database studies for uh, one of the re-entry vehicles and I believe he had said something on the order of 80,000 solutions and he was saying, hey, without TechBlock Chorus, there really wasn't much I could do uh, to evaluate them outside of maybe look at one or two spot cases. And now uh, with Chorus, he can actually evaluate both the integrated quantities coming out of the solution as well as the kind of the qualitative flow physics. So that's kind of an overview of how Chorus can be used in that case. Um, the cool thing about having the uh, data that you get out of go-kart is you can actually go through and say oh I want to look at uh, the residuals and you can kind of look at this as a spot check on convergence uh, in this case you can see most of them basically converged but you know sometimes it's hard to know if a solution converged purely by looking at the CP on the surface of the wing uh, then you can kind of get lulled into uh, oh yeah that looks good but in fact it may not be and, and by looking at some of the residuals you can very quickly see hey, is this reasonably converged uh, for the level of accuracy that I'm interested in? So, so that, that ability, again, to bring in quantitative and qualitative data, as well as evaluate uh, the solutions. In this case, you know, I'm looking at my independent space. It's not, not really interesting, but, uh, oh, I didn't bring in the other data. Not important. Uh, but in principle, you can actually look at the output variables and, again, start to look at some modeling, some response surface modeling, and you can take those response surfaces out uh, and use them as part of your design process. So, so that's just a little bit more on how TechPlot Chorus can kind of fit in to the overall workflow. At this point, I'd like to go ahead and uh, invite the audience to ask questions. So if you're asking yourself, okay, how do I ask questions? Down again on your sidebar, you should see a little plus minus, and that uh, plus minus actually is for the, uh, the sidebar. If you hit the plus on the questions, you can actually uh, ask questions directly into that box. So if you have questions, uh, go ahead and use the, the time now to go ahead and ask questions. Um, 
And while we're doing that, uh, Janet, you didn't mention this, uh, but could you tell me a little bit more about where can you run GoCart? You, you, I know you said that you don't necessarily need to be on the NAS supercomputer, but is it a, um, can you run this on Windows, Mac, Linux? And what do you That's support? That's a great question. Yeah, um, traditionally, Cart uh, 3D comes, um, you can, you're able to run it on Linux uh, traditionally, and what we've done is open it up to um, be able to run on all three operating systems, so Mac, Linux, um, and as well as Windows. And what I want to mention is um, we have a new version of GoCart coming out um, that includes the adjoint um, meshing capability, and that uh, will be made available to Windows probably by the end of this month. So fairly open in all different platforms. Um, think that covers about what everybody uses out there in industry and academia, as well as our government contractors. Um, another question, you had shown uh, the way to do a deflection study. Can you also do uh, grid morphing where you may actually want to, say, extend that aileron, uh, or is it primarily just a rotation of an existing geometry? Um, I think what you're asking is sort of how the mesh changes as the shape of that uh, the aileron deflects or extends. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, just you can okay. extend it or change the shape of the aileron uh, directly in the product. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can definitely do that. And what the mesh does, um, the cool thing about Cart 3D is that um, the automated meshing will pick that up and kind of gen up a new mesh right within the GUI. So you can you can scale the aileron to stretch it out. You can deflect it. Um, all within the GUI, the, the mesh, the solver will basically um, come up with a new refinement area um, and detect that change in the geometry and create a new mesh for you. Um, and the cool thing about the adjoint is that it will actually um, do automated meshing, um, basically detect areas where there are flow gradients and come up with a near perfect mesh based on that. So um, yeah, all very flexible capability within the GUI. And maybe one additional question around the, the meshing capability. Um, how fine a mesh uh, can you create? A, can you control the, the level of refinement, especially around boundaries? Um, well, because it's a viscous code, um, you're going to get um, a little bit. You don't have that boundary layer. Um, you don't account for that. But what you can do is um, you can draw refinement boxes, and you can control the mesh that way. Um, through the GUI. You can also use the adjoint to create mesh um, and do refinements um, with that method, and it'll automatically detect gradients, for example, where shocks occur, and do refinements there. Yeah, so, so that, that was a piece I was quite, quite interested in, was uh, how do you refine things like shock, uh, perhaps more so than like boundary conditions, I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, very much. We have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, before we will uh, finish up here. Um, let's see. <laughs> Someone asked a question about a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, thanks for the t-shirt. Well. <laughs> I actually had a quick question about um, the, the way that we load data into TechPlot. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, for, for the cases that you showed, um, did you just read directly in the different .dat files? Um, because in my example, I loaded in um, the solution files, but then when I went to load in a text file, um, it sort of loaded it into, it was able to load it into the same table, but some of the information was, as we showed, null. Um, how did you step through that process in this example that you created? Uh, well, the, I think the, the big difference here is that uh, I kind of did it in two steps. So uh, one had to do with an index file uh, that I used Excel for, which basically I brought over okay. the the integrated quantities. And then in the first step, I actually went through and used a file crawl to pull uh, the independent variables and the, uh, the files in particular. Uh, but because these data are text files, uh, in principle, you know, course is, is somewhat agnostic about data in, in a way. You can kind of set it up to load or process any kind of data you want. Um, so in this case, I brought it in as a, as a text file, even though it says DAT. Uh, one of the things that we added recently is we've kind of got a couple of things in here. Now I can actually shoot data into R. This is still just a prototype, but in principle you can take uh, the data that you have from your collection that the integrated quantities and actually do statistical analysis using an, a program like R. 
But you can also, if you want to go say, okay, well, hey, where's that image? You can open it up directly uh, where it might be in the folder. So I can kind of go in and look at the, the results directly. And uh, because 360EX hasn't been hooked up yet, you can, in fact, load these data, say, for the, the cut plane or the cut planes in, in uh, let's see, which one is that? Oh, there it is. Uh, slice plane. So I can I can actually just load those directly into EX as well, even though uh, it's ever so slightly different in terms of um, making use of say style files, etc. But the thing that I really like about the new version of TechBlot is I can actually very quickly get to the the slices that I'm interested in, which is uh, something that you couldn't do easily before. Uh, in addition, I can look at, say, like the XZ plane and just put it, oh, there we go, the, put the, uh, the planes in the right orientation, which makes it much easier to, to view the data. So you can kind of pop in, okay, well, there's the area of interest. And now I can kind of deactivate to get to the one that I'm interested in. So uh, very excited about the possibility of using EX with Chorus, which will be coming in the next month. Um, so at any rate, that's kind of an idea of how I brought the data in. Um, one thing that we're looking at, though, is you know, how can we make this process even easier? And, and we're considering uh, strategies that might just point to a directory and kind of pull out results and allow the user uh, to very quickly kind of decide, identify files like, oh, that's a solution file, oh, that's a history file. So, okay. Uh, someone says uh, they were a little late. Uh, okay, will there will this be downloaded, or I'm sorry, uh, available on the web? And the answer is yes. We have uh, this will be recorded and available online, likely by this afternoon. So uh, if you didn't get to sit through all of it, you will have an opportunity uh, to view the recording online. So did that answer your question, Janet? By the way. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I think we're just about out of time. Uh, if you do have additional questions, I'll go back to that last slide and perhaps uh, if you have questions either about TechPlot or uh, about GoCard or Card3D, uh, feel free to contact us or to uh, go to the websites, the respective websites at www.desktop.arrow, cool uh, domain name, or uh, www.techplot.com, or you can email either of us directly. Again, uh, Janet, thank you so much uh, for putting together a very interesting talk on uh, two, I think, very interesting uh, examples that I think highlight how Chorus and uh, GoCart can be used in conjunction to help users with that kind of initial design. And, it was my uh, pleasure, and thank you so ahead. much. Thank you. And again, thank you to the audience for uh, joining us today. Again, the recording will be available online uh, as early as this afternoon. Thank you again.